Hello, sweet people. I am Wendy, and I'm here at Chino Yoga Center. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are so uh, with you in all of this. We're just hoping we can help you with a little bit of maybe recalibrating, and um, even though you might be in a place where you're feeling anxious or worrying about things, that maybe this will be a time in your day that you can practice this gentle align and flow practice um, just to soothe your spirit, your mind, and your body. So let's begin with um, coming to a seat on your mat. I'm seated on my yoga blanket. You can sit on a beach towel. And I brought two of my foam blocks with me. So if you don't have the blocks, it's okay. We can um, adjust accordingly, but just make yourself comfortable. And let's sit in Sukhasana, easy seat to begin with. Just uh, growing your spine tall, letting your ears be over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, and your arms relaxed, hands resting, just nestled over your kneecaps. And then start to notice your own breath. Just taking a few deep cleansing breaths. Breathe in through your nose. Let the breath go through your mouth. Do that again. Now just seal your lips. Let your breath come in and out naturally through your nostrils. And if it's helpful, close your eyes. Allow your head to fall forward in a bowed position. Let your chin come close to your sternum. Feel the stretch. Keep your back straight. On your next breath in, lift your head upwards towards the sky. Stretch your throat. Gently allow your head to fall to the right. I will always go in the same direction that I say, so I'm turning my head to a tilt to the right, my right ear over my right shoulder. Take your left hand and just set it on the ground, fingertips away, walk your fingertips away from your body, feeling a good stretch along the left side of your neck. Then return to neutral, let your head float up and fall to the left. Right hand down on the ground, walk your fingertips away, feeling the stretch along the right side of the neck. And then allowing the head to drift back up, hand back to your kneecaps, Setting yourself up straight where your upper body is over your pelvis. We're going to come into a pose that's a little bit of a sort of a variation on Lord of the Fishes, where we're just going to twist. Twists are so soothing to your nervous system. Uh, let's go ahead and grow the spine tall, the top of the head lifting up towards the ceiling. Then take your left hand to your right thigh. Your right hand can go behind you near yourself and start to turn your shoulders to the right. Take a breath in, and on your exhale, twist a little bit further to the right. Stay here and breathe. Then release your twist come back to face forward, and we'll go the opposite direction. So now the right hand is on the left knee. 
The left hand is behind you. You're sitting up very straight in your spine. Take a breath in and then turn and twist on your breath out. I'll try to stay um, speaking what we're doing throughout the practice. So if you are not able to face your device that you're watching this video on, you can still follow along by just following the cues as I speak them. Let's release back to facing forward. Reach your arms above your head, lift and stretch. Feel your rib cage separate from your hips. Turn your palms facing outward. Take one more breath in. Then press the energy and the air around you down toward the floor. Good. Inhale, lift the arms, palms facing one another. Exhale, rotating the hands, letting the arms come down. The elbows are straight. You're breathing in movement and breath. Good. One more time. Lift and lower. Excellent. Now we're going to transition to coming off of our blanket, off of the prop. Just set it aside and come onto your mat with your legs bent in front of you, your feet planted about hip distance apart, and your hands behind you, just supporting you. And then drop your knees to the side, both of them going side to side, like windshield wipers, left and right. Still with that centered, beautiful breath, I usually say it's about four beats on the inhale and four on the exhale, with a slight pause between both inhale and exhale. So just come to your own personal rhythm and move with your breath. All right, so now we'll come to Dandasana, staff pose, sitting up very tall, again, letting the upper body rest on top of the pelvis. Scoot the flesh of your glutes from behind you and straighten your legs, flex your feet, try to separate your toes. Nice. All right. Now with the feet flexed so much that maybe even the heels lift off the ground, we're going to float the arms up, breathe in, and reach forward, folding from the place where your pants crease. Come forward and then allow your arms to soften, let your head get heavy. Now while you're in this forward fold in Dandasana, allow your body to breathe deeply into your back ribs. Feel and expand widely, and then knit back together. One more inhale, one more exhale, and then on your breath in, reach forward and lift back up. Turn your hands out and float the arms down. Very nice. Now we're going to come to our hands and knees. So in this position, known as table position, we want our wrists under our shoulders and we want our knees under our hips. The tops of the feet are resting on the floor safely. Part of what makes this practice a little more of a gentle, gentle practice is we move slowly with intention and we pay particular attention to our alignment. All right, so we're in table position. We'll move through a series of cat and cow. So your wrists are under your shoulders and your fingers have space between them. You can see the color of your mat. The tops of your feet are pressing downward towards the earth. Take a breath in and come into cow. Lift your chin and your tailbone. And then round your back, coming into your cat pose. Breath in. And breath out. Breath in. And breath out. And then return to table. Curl your toes under. We're coming into flying table. So in this position, you're going to lift your knees probably two inches from the mat. It's a lot like a plank pose. So if you need to take a break at any time and shake your wrists out between these postures, feel free to do so. All right, toes are curled under. We're going to lift the knees just a couple of inches from the ground. Lots of energy in this pose. So if you start feeling a little warm, it's perfectly normal. So notice that I'm keeping my neck in line with my spine. I'm not bowing the head forward, just keeping everything linear from the top of my head to the tip of my tailbone. Now from here, we're gonna make our way to a softly bended 
downward facing dog. The knees will stay bent. Send your hips up and back. Keeping the knees softly bent will keep the strain off of the knees. And then we'll walk the dog. Just alternate bending one leg and just gently straightening the other leg. Nothing aggressive. Everything's moving very slowly. Letting your head get heavy, looking towards your toes. And then begin to walk your feet. Take your time, slow movements. If it's difficult to move your feet to your hands, you can walk your hands to your feet. We're coming into ragdoll now. So the feet will be about two fist widths apart. You'll grab your elbows lightly with your opposite hands. Bend your knees a lot here and allow your head to dangle away from your neck, suspended allowing your upper body to get heavy and your arms to drape towards the ground. This is ragdoll. So if you use your imagination, think about a ragdoll. What would that look like if a child was holding that ragdoll from the waist? This is the same kind of image that we're doing, creating in our physical body. And then if it feels good to you, begin a slow and gentle sway, moving from your ribs side to side. Allow your hands to drape towards the earth and very, very slowly count in your mind to five. Begin now and we'll rise to Tadasana Mountain Pose, standing up. One, two, three, four, and five. So Tadasana is found in a lot of our poses, um, especially our balanced postures. So it's important to get used to what this mo this movement, this asana is. Your arms are strong and straight. Your fingertips are pressing down towards the earth. So your shoulder blades are down and towards the middle of your back. Your belly is engaged. You're bringing your inner belly towards your inner spine. Lots of engagement in what's called our core. And then your legs are strong. So they're, you're not locking your knees, but you're engaging the thigh muscles and just bringing a lot of energy into this pose where you feel the soles of your feet on your mat firmly, like a mountain. In this posture, you could begin to claim a mantra for yourself, perhaps counting your blessings, perhaps saying to yourself, Danya God, which is a Sanskrit phrase meaning I am thankful or thank you or I am full of gratitude. There is much to be thankful for and shifting your focus to the things that are good in your life will help you stay mindful in the moment and reduce stress and anxiety. This is mountain pose. From here, we will do a gentle vinyasa flow, which is part of this gentle align and flow practice. I'll step to the top of my mat, you step to the top of yours and sweep the arms out and up, breathing in. Prayer like hands slowly fold in half, breathing out. Come up halfway, placing your hands at the tops of your shins, lengthening your spine, then fold in half again. Bend knees, rise to Tadasana, reach your arms above your head, and place your hands at your heart center. This is a sun salutation. We will begin to do this probably two more times. So let's begin now. Ready? Breathe in. Fold, halfway left, fold, bend knees, rise up to standing, hands to your heart, inhale, exhale, halfway left, fold, rise back up, hands to your heart, very nice. Now sweep the arms back above your head, lace your fingers together and point your index fingers towards the sky. Think of yourself like a pencil, very tall, squeezing your biceps close to your ears. Set your feet hip distance apart, remember it's about two fist widths, and reach with your fingers towards the sky. We're gonna move into crescent moon. So take a breath in, on your exhale, lean to your right. So you're really leaning, stretching open your left side body. Inhale back to center. Good. Now we'll go the other way. Movement with breath. Inhaling to center. Exhaling to crescent moon. Back to the middle. Exhaling to crescent moon to the left. 
and back to the middle. One more time each side. Wonderful. Hands to your heart. All right. So now we'll do a second sun salutation. Again, taking it gently and slowly. If you feel that it would be helpful to use a blanket to support your knees, go ahead and set your blanket on your mat in a way that it's folded in half so that you have support for your knees, but um, it's not too terribly thick. All right. So we're going to stand in Tadasana once more at the top of your mat. Then sweep the arms out and up, breathe in. Fold in half, come up halfway. And if you need your block, set them right beside you. Step your right leg back and drop your knee to your blanket. This is a low lunge. So you'll notice that I've moved the blocks a little closer to me for stability, but I don't want us to bear down on the blocks with the hands. So just place your fingertips mindfully, placing all the tips of your fingers on the tops of the blocks to help support your stability. If you still feel a little wobbly, move your left foot slightly to the left side of the mat so that your knee is still over your ankle and in line with your middle toes, but it's a slightly wider stance. Grow your spine tall. This is a low lunge. Now you can stay right here and practice your breath, breathing into the count of four and out to the count of four. Or you can join me in bringing your arms up, breathing in, and down to your heart, breathing out. Inhale, exhale. One more, inhale, exhale. Very nice, hands to the blocks for stability, curl your toes under, and then bring yourself back up to the top of your mat. Stay folded over, come up halfway. Fold again and rise up slowly with slightly bent knees back to Tadasana, hands above your head, and then right back to your heart. Breathe in, reach out and up. Breathe out, fold in half. Come up halfway. Carefully bring your left leg back. You're going to set your knee upon your blanket for a low lunge. All those same cues apply. We're keeping proper alignment by keeping the knee over the ankle or behind it and in line with your middle toes. S sitting up very tall in your spine with a really good stretch across your left hip flexors. You'll notice my back leg is draped more like fabric. That's making it more of a lunge rather than coming up into more of a box shape. So sinking into your hips, if you feel stable, begin to lift your arms up. That's your breath in, hands to your heart. That's your breath out. Two more, inhale, exhale. Out and up, and to your heart. Good, place your hands back down upon your blocks. Go ahead and curl the toes under and try your best to step back up to the top of your mat. Set your blocks off to the side at the top. Staying folded over, come up halfway. Fold again, and now take your peace fingers around your big toes. So we're gonna come into a pose called Gorilla. First, bend your knees a lot. Let your chest rest upon your thighs and let your elbows have a gentle bend in them. Let your head become heavy, looking through your legs. Now, on your next inhale, you'll straighten your legs and your arms and you'll pull against your toes. Breathe in and out. Keep that engagement, lots of energy in the whole body. You can feel it coming up your arms, through your spine, and down your legs and to your feet. One more breath here, and then surrender, bending the elbows, bending the knees, and just relaxing for a moment. One more gorilla pose. So let's begin. Inhale, straighten the legs and the arms, pull against your toes. Keep breathing and release, surrender. Let your fingers come away from your toes and remember that slow rise, counting to five. One, two, three, four, and five. Back to Tadasana. Well done. All right, let's take the blanket off the mat. Coming back to the top of your mat, you'll bring yourself into chair pose now. So the feet come ideally side by side big toes touching and align the outsides of your feet, so the pinky toe sides. 
and then we'll begin to drop the tailbone like we're getting ready to sit into a chair. Take a peek at your knees. You want them to still stay together and not one in front of the other. And then the arms come out at an angle, right out in front of you. Fingertips facing forward, palms facing one another. So I'm just gonna turn so you can see. We're just dropping the tailbone down. Lots of energy in this pose. Now we're gonna make our way to eagle arms. So we're bringing our arms out like a cactus, and we'll sweep the right elbow under the left. Then bringing those arms together as much as we can, like a coiled rope, lifting the elbows to the same height as the shoulders. So if that's too challenging, that's okay. Modify and bring your hands to your shoulders. Keep sinking into chair pose. Very nice. To come out of this safely, go slowly. Release back to cactus arms. And then as if you were doing a military press, press your arms up and then stand up, float your arms down. Well done. Let's come back to chair pose. Same as before, we're just sinking the tailbone straight down, bringing the arms out at an angle, strong arms. They're straight, your body is sinking towards the floor. You might feel this stretch in a lot of different places. Um, maybe it's in your shins, maybe you feel it in your calves, maybe it's in your shoulders. Now we're gonna rip. come back to our eagle arms, making our way to a cactus shape with the arms. This time the left elbow will go under the right, wrapping the arms like a rope possibly, and lifting the elbows to the same height as the shoulders. Once more, a reminder, if that's too challenging, you can bring your hands to your shoulders. Sink a little lower, you're doing great. All right, come out of it the way you went into it. Back to your cactus arms, like a military press, press your arms up, stand up, and then bring your hands down by your sides. Well done. Let's march it out a little bit before we move into some warriors. So this time I'm gonna ask you to come to the back of your mat. You'll step forward with your right foot. Right foot forward, and then plant your back foot at an angle. So the toes are slightly forward of the heel. Sink into the front knee, so it's gonna bend. Your upper body is gonna face forward, and then lastly, the arms up over your head. Strong, straight arms, sparkling your fingers towards the sky, sinking your tailbone down towards the ground. This is warrior one. It's a powerful posture. I want you to think about your tripod foot, big toe, little toe in the middle of your heel. It's pretty easy to feel that in your front foot, but I'd like you to also think about your back foot, big toe, little toe, and center of heel. We're gonna to return to our cactus arms and incorporate a twist now. So the cactus arms are elbows, same height as shoulders, forearms facing forward and our palms facing forward. We're gonna to rotate to the right, move slowly. So this is a twist in warrior one, then come back to facing forward and rotate all the way as far as you can go to the left. Then back to facing forward and back to warrior one. Now we'll move to warrior two. Right arm forward, left arm back, and adjust your back foot to be parallel to the mat, the edge of the mat behind you. Flip your palm and reverse your warrior. Right arm up, left arm down. Back to warrior two. Straighten your front leg and let's come into triangle. This is the one where both of your legs stay straight and you reach forward with your front arm, then you drop it down to your shin and lift your left arm up. Bend into the front knee, return to warrior two, drop your arms and step up to the top of your mat. Good. Now we'll come back to the back of the mat and we'll do the same sequence on the other side. Left foot forward for warrior one. Back foot is at an angle. You're gonna rotate your ribs to face forward. Your knee is in line with your middle toes and over or behind your ankle. Sweep the arms up. So the same cue applies with your toes and the center of your heels. Front foot, big toe, little toe, heel. Back foot, big toe, little toe, heel. Pressing down into the earth, reaching up. So there's this action of reaching and rooting. arms, rotate, 
to your left. See how far you can twist. Holding your balance, begin that unwinding and twisting to your right. Go as far as you can go. And then back to facing forward. Good job. Back to warrior one, now to warrior two. Left arm forward, right arm backwards. You're gonna adjust your back foot once more. So now you see you're very linear. Your arms are right over your legs. Your upper body is right over your pelvis. Turning your chin to face forward, flip your front palm and reverse your warrior. Simultaneously lifting the front arm as you lower the back arm. Good. Back to warrior two arms, straightening the front leg, setting up for triangle. It's a hinging action from the place where your pants crease. You're reaching forward, then lower the left hand, raise the right arm, you're in triangle. Bend your front knee, float back to warrior two, face forward warrior one, drop your arms and step up to the top of your mat. And just march it out. Good work. So we've done some warriors, we've done some triangles, now I'd like you to come into a wide legged stance. So we're gonna place our feet along the length of the mat. So we'll all be facing the long side of the mat. This is a good place for your block. So place it around the front of, in front of you. And then we're gonna slightly micro bend the knees and begin to forward fold in this wide legged stance. Taking hold of your block for stability and just using it as a helpmate, a guide for where you're trying to bring your head. So in this instance, you might be trying to think of it as like, I'm gonna put my head on the block. And you can move the block. Some of you are not gonna bring your heads to the block. Some of you could stack your uh, fists and bring your head to the stacked fist. Some of us are gonna be a little more um, parallel to the ground. We're all different. So you do what you can do and come to your own personal edge, challenge yourself to get there and then don't forget to breathe. All right, so this is wide leg forward fold. That same action of breathing into the rib cage, letting the breath fill widely, and then feeling your ribs knit back together. So breath in, and breath out. Two more. Last one. Then come up halfway placing your hands on your block, and we'll laterally lunge to the right. Remember, I'm gonna to go to my right, so I'm bending my right knee, sinking towards the right side of the mat, feeling a lovely stretch along the inside of that left leg. Your right quadricep muscles are firing up, they're building strength, you're building endurance, you're doing great. Let's come back to the middle, and sink laterally to the left, getting a lovely stretch along the inside of the right leg. To the center. Now you can take the block with you if you need to. If you don't need it, you can just bring your body around. Some of you might have a range of motion to place your fingertips on your mat. We're coming into a forward fold to the right leg. Then slowly walk your way to your left leg and hover over the left thigh. Being gently back to the middle, taking hold of your block, place yourself into a halfway lift. So this has that, that same action like we do when we're in our sun salutations. You're lengthening your spine, growing the top of your head forward and your tailbone backwards, a big long stretch of your spine, and obviously a lovely long stretch on the back of your legs. It's from here that we're gonna heel to our feet, just a couple of clicks, and land with your feet in shape like duck feet, getting ready for goddess pose. So bend your knees and then mindfully place one hand and then the other at your waist and hinge up to a straight back. Feeling very grounded in your feet, big toe, little toe and heels, sinking the tailbone down, your upper body resting its weight right on top of your pelvis, 
and then cactus arms again. So this is goddess pose. There's a mudra in here where you can place your pointer finger and your thumb together if that suits you. And we'll stay here for three full rounds of breath. Let's begin together. Inhale and exhale. Breathing in and out through your nose. Great job. Now imagine you're holding some barbells. You're going to do a military press. Press those arms up and then slowly come to standing. Put your arms down and heel toe your feet back together. Very nice. We're ready to move into some balance now. Balance, you can use the wall or you can use a chair or you can stand directly on your mat. So if you were to use the, the wall or a chair, place the standing leg closest to whatever you're using, the wall or the chair. So I'm just gonna turn just to show you, if we were up against the wall and we were going into tree pose, you would stand on your left leg, my left side body is facing the wall. We're gonna slowly bring the sole of the right foot to the ankle or the calf. Some of you have a range of motion to bring your foot to your inner thigh. All are, are tree, so you decide what's best for you today. And then maybe you float your arms up. Notice my fingertips are still on the wall. If you were holding a chair, you could keep your left hand on the chair. And then just practice moving your hand off of the wall or off of the chair. Keeping your drishti, your gaze, focused on something in front of you that doesn't move. So this is tree pose. Still with our centered breath. Slow breath in to the count of four and slow breath out. So I like to come out of it the way that I went into it. So that would mean lowering the arms, bringing your knee forward, and placing your foot down beside the other. And then if you feel good, don't march it out, march it out. All right, so now we'll do the other side. So if you're using the wall, turn so that your right side body is facing the wall. Mindfully place your sole of your left foot either on your ankle, or your inner thigh, and then float your arms up. We're using our breath to create space in our vertebrae. So you're lengthening your body using your breath. So just use your imagination and think of each of those little squishy parts of your vertebrae, those lovely spaces between each of the bones, inflating with your breath. It'll create a little bit of height and it'll feel really good in your spine. Soft drishti, that's your focus on something in front of you. Lovely. All right, so come out of it the way you went into it, lowering your arms, bringing your knee forward, and mindfully placing your foot down back to Tadasana. So there we are again, back in Tadasana. So the next balancing posture, again, you can stay at the wall or use the chair, um, but I'm going to demonstrate it facing forward. This next one is called tripod. So you'll bring your arms out to your sides and then you'll bring your weight to your right leg. Keep your left foot flexed and just send your leg directly out to the side of your body. So this left leg is fully engaged. All the muscles are hugging the bones. You're pressing through the heel of your left foot. Stay strong. And it's okay if you come out of it. It's okay if you need to take a break. Be kind to yourself. Think positive thoughts as you're moving thanking your body for doing what your brain is telling it to do. All right, good. Place the foot down and march it out a little bit. Shake it out. We'll begin on the other side. Stand on your left leg. So first you find Tadasana, which is an even sensation of the weight of your body on both of your feet. Consciously shift your weight to your left leg. Send the right leg out, opening into tripod pose. Set your foot down, march it out, air high fives all around, and then we'll come into one last standing balancing pose. And I'm choosing airplane. Airplane, we want to keep both of our hip points facing the same distance from the ground. So I'm just going to turn to show you what I mean. A lot of times what happens in airplane is 
because the cue is to lift your leg behind you, there's sometimes a rotation of the hip because you can get your leg higher when your hips are open. But it's, think of it instead like scissoring your legs apart. So finding your balance on your right leg, bring your big toe of your left foot behind you. Start with your arms out by your sides. Keep your drishti, your focus on something that's not moving in front of you. And then simultaneously, lead with your heart forward as you lift your back leg up behind you. So there's different thoughts on your foot here. You could keep your toe pointed or you could flex your foot facing the toes towards the ground. You decide what feels good for you today. And then we'll come out of it the way we went into it. Step it out a little bit. Nicely done. Now, if you were practicing this at the wall, you could certainly hold the wall and just bring your right big toe behind you and just keep that idea of scissoring the leg, both of the hip points facing the floor. So you can hold the wall the entire time or your chair and concentrate on keeping your heart forward and scissoring the leg straight up, both hip points equal distance from the ground. Turn the way you came, mindfully placing your foot down, you've returned to Tadasana. Great job. So in an ordinary align and flow type class that's not necessarily a gentle practice, you would probably bend also to the floor. But we're just going to take a seat. So go ahead and come down to the ground. <clears throat> and we'll return back to our Dandasana pose. Dandasana, you'll recall, is moving the flesh of your glutes from behind you. You're sitting up tall on your spine. Bend your right knee, and then reach with your left arm forward. Hug the knee and twist to your right. Spine twist. Good. Release, shake the legs out, and let's do the other side. Left leg bent, reach with your right arm around, hug and twist. Top of your head still facing the sky. And release. Well done. Shake your legs out. We're going to come down onto our mats now. So scoot yourself to the middle of your mat. Set your feet about hip distance apart. You'll want to bring one of your two blocks with you. And then mindfully, one elbow at a time, come onto your back. It feels really nice. Walk your feet close to your glutes. You're going to want to come into bridge pose with proper alignment. So let's talk about it before we go into it. Knees are bent, feet are about hip distance apart or slightly wider for more stability, and maybe the longest finger of your hand could touch the back of your heel. You're pressing into the whole foot, big toe, little toe, the middle of your heel, that tripod foot that we've been talking about all class. And then on your breath in, you lift your hips up. Keep going, keep pressing into your feet. Lift up your hips, high, high, high. You're going to feel a good stretch along the back of your neck and maybe even a little bit of a choking sensation in the front. Now, if you want to get more height in your bridge pose, you can make robot arms where your arms are shaped in, um, at angles. Press into the elbows and lift up your upper back also. As we come out of bridge pose, we go slowly we're respecting our vertebrae, our body, being honoring of our body, one slow movement at a time. Relax here, take a breath in. Feeling your belly rise and fall. Now we'll set up for one more bridge pose. So if you scooted out of place, just remember those same cues, feet hip distance apart, maybe you're Heels are close enough to touch your fingertips um, with your arms by your sides. On your breath in, lift your hips. Same as before, if that was helpful and you enjoyed that extra part where you press into your elbows and lift up the upper back as well, try that. And then one vertebrae at a time, returning your spine to your mat.
Place your hands upon your belly and take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Figure four. Your legs are set up perfectly for this. You're just going to cross your right ankle on top of the left leg. So in this posture, you can stay right here in a gentle practice. This is called figure four prep. And you're just letting the leg do the work to open up the space around your right hip. However, if you'd like to add a little bit more, you could try pressing your right hand against your thigh away from you. Just be mindful to keep your back flat. You don't want your left hip rolling up as you press. And then lastly, if you'd like, you could place your right hand between the gap of your legs, lift up your left leg, and lace your fingers behind your left thigh, keeping your left shin bone parallel to the ground, feet flexed. So you'll notice I haven't lifted up my head, we're just using the strength of the arms to pull the left thigh towards you as you're pressing your right knee away. Slow, steady, center breath. If you feel like your head is tilting slightly backwards, as it sometimes will do in these poses, simply lift up your head and mindfully place it back down so that you're gazing directly above you. And then we'll release this figure four posture and open the arms out to the sides, the feet to the width of the mat, and windshield wiper the knees side to side. Just loosening up. Then back to that original setup like we did for bridge. This time we'll cross the other leg on top. So left ankle at the top of the right thigh. Same as before, you could stay right here. You could apply a little bit of pressure. You could take your left hand through the gap you made and come into the fullness of the expression of this figure four pose. Slow, deep breaths. And you can stay in this posture for as long as you like. So if you want to stay longer and push pause on the video, go ahead and do that. Um, one more breath here. Then we're going to slowly release the foot, the other foot, set the feet wide, and arms out to your sides, windshield wiper the knees side to side. Okay, so I often call this next pose upside down child's pose, but I recently heard it called hedgehog, so that's cute too. So we're gonna bring both knees in. It looks like a, a child's pose, but you're on your back. And you're just squeezing your knees in towards your chest. It's more of a compression. So your shin bones come down with the strength of your arms towards your thighs, and your thighs are towards your ribs. If you would like to bring your head off the mat, you can do so. Just go gently, bringing your chin close to your knees. Just as slowly, bringing your head back down to the mat and carefully releasing the pose. Take hold of your block. We're getting close to the end. This is waterfall, um, sometimes called legs up the wall, and we're using the block. You're gonna lift your hips up and place the block under your sacrum on its lowest level. So you want to have zero pain in this posture. Um, your sacrum is that bony triangle part of your lower spine, and that's where the majority of the weight of your body should be on, on, on the block. And then one leg at a time, send the right leg up, and then send the left leg up. If you need to bend your knees, go ahead, bend your knees. If you can straighten your legs, straighten your legs. Your arms can be by your sides or by your out to the side. Some of you might even enjoy bringing your arms up over your head. It's all good. Whatever makes you feel good in this posture, waterfall. Now, if you lifted your arms over your head, bring them back down by your sides. Slowly and carefully and mindfully bend your knees to where you look like you're in a chair. So you'll notice now the shin bones are parallel to the ground. We're going to count to five as we lower our feet slowly. This is going to engage all these wonderful muscles of our core. So here we go. One, start to lower your heels. Two, three, four, and five. Ah, just relax. Feels really good. 
we're going to come off the block. So lift your hips up, set the block off to the side. And then the last poses are usually twists in a vinyasa type flow class. So that's where we're going to go next. So I'd like you to widen the stance of your feet to the width of your mat. Open your arms out to a T to your sides and just allow both knees to fall to the right for a supine twist to the right. Your chest still faces the sky, but you can let your head fall in the, to the left, away from the direction of your knees. Take some deep breaths here, letting the breath be a little longer on the exhale. Now we'll switch the direction, knees falling to the left, head falling to the right, letting your bones get heavy letting them sink toward the floor. Much more of a passive stretch, really letting go. And then lastly, back to the knees being upright. Walk your feet back together. Squeeze your right knee in. Squeeze your left knee in. And then maybe stirring the knees like a pot. A couple of rotations clockwise and counterclockwise. And then carefully and slowly placing the right leg long to the right corner of the mat, the left leg long to the left corner of the mat, creating a little bit of um, openness across the front half of the body, keeping your arms separate from the sides of the body. This is Shavasana. It's the last posture of the yoga practice. It's the discipline of stillness. Close your eyes. And just breathe. stay here for as long as you wanted. For the sake of time on the video, we're going to go ahead and bring the knees to a bend and roll over to the right side. Cradle your head with your arm and just tuck the knees in towards your belly. Close your eyes once more. And let's take three deep breaths together. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Inhale. And exhale. Think of your breath as soothing your whole spirit. Letting go of any hidden tension. And keep your eyes open. Place your hands on the ground. Use your arm strength to press yourself slowly back up to seated, back to Sukhasana, ankles crossed if that's comfortable. Coming back to a straight spine. And just survey your body just for a moment. Just notice how you might feel a little lighter